My name is Jerry Yellen. I'm one of 16 million people who served in World War II. On my 18th birthday, February 15th, 1942, I enlisted in the Army Air Corps. I wanted to fly fighters against the Japanese because of what they did at Pearl Harbor. I graduated from flying school with 10 hours in a P-40 in August of 1943. 28 of us in our class were sent to Hawaii to get further training, and I remained in the 78th Fighter Squadron my entire career in the military. We flew P-40s, then P-47s, and then we flew P-51s. And on March 7th, 1945, we flew from Saipan 650 miles to a small eight-square-mile island called Iwo Jima. There were 90,000 soldiers fighting on eight square miles of land. 67,000 American Marines, and 23,000 Japanese defenders. The sights, the sounds, the smells of that battle remain with me to this day. There were 28,000 dead bodies strewn across Iwo Jima, 21,000 Japanese, and 7,000 American Marines. I had a mission. My mission was to kill Japanese. I flew 19 eight-hour long-range missions over Japan. The first was on April 7, 1945, the first land-based mission ever flown by Army Air Corps fighter planes over Japan. I watched as bombers dropped their bombs, B-29s dropped their bombs on square miles of Tokyo, which was burning, and not once did I ever think there were people on the ground. They were Japs. They were not human. They were my enemy. On August 14th, the war ended. I had flown with 16 young guys who didn't come back from the war. The oldest was 26, and the youngest was a guy from Brooklyn by the name of Phil Schlomberg, 19 years old. When I came home, I had a very difficult time. Speaking to my parents was impossible. Speaking to my sister, Maxine, was difficult. It was tough to talk with anybody. I had no buddies. I had no airplane. I had no mission to fly. I really had little purpose in my life. In 1949, on Good Friday, I went on a blind date with a young lady from Brooklyn, Helene Schulman. We were engaged on May 30th, married on October 22nd, 1949. Our first son was born on November 6th, 1950. Our fourth son was born August 16th, 1960. And without Helene, without her support, without her knowing anything about what I did or why I behaved as I did, she loved me and I loved her. And then, in 1975, she saw Maharishi Mahesh Yogi on television and decided she wanted to learn how to do transcendental meditation. And she learned, and I learned shortly after, and my life changed dramatically. I felt comfortable with myself. I felt better about myself. I felt better about other people. I became a better person. Last year, early in the year, I received a telephone call from a young woman that I knew by the name of Lynn Clock. And she asked me, Jerry, do you know how to dress a uniform? What do you mean, Lynn? Well, you know, put medals and ribbons in the proper place. I said, why? And she said, Dory committed suicide. I knew Dory. He was a Bosnia veteran, been in the military for eight years, and came home and killed himself. When I dressed the uniform and she left, I freaked out with myself. I was terribly disturbed. I knew what combat was like. I knew what it did to families. I knew what Bob Roth was doing, a good friend of mine with the David Lynch Foundation. So I called Bob and I asked him, do you think David 
would like to open up a division of the David Lynch Foundation called Operation Warrior Wellness. And that's the way this began. It's why you and I are here tonight. Today, there are 50, 500,000, 600,000 young veterans coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan suffering from what I suffered, undiagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder. Linda Bilmes, a professor at Harvard, and Joseph Stiglitz, a Nobel laureate, wrote a book that was published in 2008 called The $3 Trillion War. They estimate that it cost $15 billion a year to take care of the mental health of the veterans coming back from those two wars. Antidepressants don't work. Antipsychotic drugs don't work. We have a better solution called Transcendental Meditation. And we ask you to think about what that does for our veterans and their families. Every one of those 550,000 who are suffering from post-traumatic stress have 10 other people that are affected. Their families are affected. Everybody is affected. And we ask for your help. We ask, as an American, for your help. We ask you to help your veterans and their families. And Operation Warrior Wellness is certainly available to help, too. Thank you very much.